Hello, and welcome to Reef Girls Reef Wrap-Up number 10. Yeah, this picture, pretty much how my husband and I both felt. We were sick, not the virus. So plumbing was supposed to have been done, but like I said, we were sick, so it had to be delayed. We also had all kinds of weather warnings about possible power outages. So we decided it was about time we finally backed up the observation tank and the frag tank by plugging a few things into the battery backup. What matters most in a power outage? Well, heat and flow. So I plugged the pump and a heater from the observation tank and a power head and the heater from the frag tank into the battery backup. This had us completely covered. Here's the sand all washed and ready to go. And when the time comes, we'll carry it upstairs one bucket at a time. There are eight bags, so 240 pounds, and I hope it's enough, and I guess we'll find out. Luckily, we only had a brief power flicker in the bad weather last night, but my husband has set this up so that there's a place to push the generator cord through. This is styrofoam, and that little square is kind of like a port. You just pull on the little plug to remove it and we can easily feed the cord through and get things hooked up inside. So next time it happens, we will be ready. Now that we have the styrofoam in the window for the generator plug, this is the perfect opportunity to bring outside air in for the skimmer. So my husband used a bulkhead and on the other side of the bulkhead is a pipe that has filter floss, carbon and filter floss in it in layers and that's to prevent bugs and fumes and whatever to whatever degree we can from being drawn into the house. The hose that's attached to that is a fairly large hose and it's the size that goes on the intake for the commercial air pump that I showed you in the last update. So we've got the hose traveling up above and down hooked into the air pump. You can just see it there. And my husband built this wooden kind of a tray to set the pump on both for sound deadening and also to keep it in place. One line is already hooked up and ready to attach to the skimmer. Remember how loud everybody said this thing was? Live plugging it in for the first time. You can hardly hear it. It's sitting on the wow. It's sitting on the silicone. You can't see it from this angle, but below the pump is a silicone mat that I used to use in the kitchen that I don't use anymore. <laughs> Look, we're standing here, you can hardly hear it. That's awesome. Okay, so we're gonna attach the air hose that's on the pump. The second port has a valve in it and that's closed. Source of air right now is outside. Air that's being pushed in, more air. Okay, okay. Uh, bear with me here because we made so many wrong assumptions when we set this up. We had no idea what we were doing as usual and you know like you just try stuff and you try and be logical and it doesn't always work and yeah so hang in there. We did learn eventually what so the right heck now, we did wrong. We just started it and there's the pH level. Well, we'll check it out later. All right something's happening here. It looks like it's trying to get air and it's not getting air. So I'm not sure what is going on here. There's no water coming out. I just opened it a bit. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. We did eventually figure it out. Okay, check this out. Ready? This is my new refugium light. Oh boy, but the idea here is to give more coverage so my catamorpha can grow. It is huge. It started out about the size of a softball back in the spring and it just keeps growing. It's holy smokes bright. Time for some more water changes. I'm gonna do a small water change on this tank and this tank, which I've been doing roughly every three days to try and get ahead of the nutrients. But this time I'm gonna do something a little different. Instead of discarding the water change water, I am gonna put it into the rock tote. So this is where I have the rocks curing for the new tank. So I'm gonna remove a whole bunch of this water and replace it with tank water. I have no idea if I've done this right. I don't know if these rocks are alive. 
no clue. So I might as well start adding organic laden water to it and just see if I can boost them a bit. As part of this water change, <laughs> I'm gonna take out the blue sponge. Yeah, look at the stuff growing on it. This is the intake for the green machine and I've had this thing running constantly. So I think it's probably time I took that out, replaced it with a clean one. Made a couple changes to the filtration for this tank for a couple reasons. This is the green machine. I took it off. I've had it running constantly on here since I set the tank up. So that's been a couple months now. And lately when I shut it off to do maintenance and turn it back on again, it won't come on. So I took it out to do a pump cleanup and it's fallen on the floor twice since I did that because, <laughs> because I'm an idiot, <laughs> basically. So I'm taking that out. I'm gonna clean it up and see if I can get it running again. And hopefully the bulb isn't smithereened inside this housing here. And the second thing is this filter. I love this filter, but it's a to get out and clean. So I removed it several days ago and I've just had the power head running that's over on the other side there, but I know I need to add more flow in this tank. So I've added this filter. It's another thing I've had in my stash for, I don't even know how long. And it's a Sun Sun filtration pump, JUP01. I don't even know if you can still get it. But the thing about this is it has a nine watt UV. It's a lot easier to take apart than that other filter. And it has this black sponge here that goes in this basket that goes down inside alongside the UV bulb. So I replaced the black sponge with pinky filter. And this thing comes with an extra bulb and extra black sponges. So I've got it hooked up in here now. You can see it at the end there. And it is really quite powerful. So I'll keep you posted on that one. I have no clue how much I paid for this. I thought, well, it's got UV and it's a filter and I can ditch two pieces of equipment and replace them with one. All right, so the water change has been done on that. <laughs> Not really much to see because it doesn't look any different, but the water level is a little higher. Salinity was a little high, but I've got that normalized between the tank water from the frag tank and adding a little bit of fresh water. And now I can put the lid back on and let it keep cooking working on making salt water. The lower tote is full, 50 gallons. Now I'm refilling this tank so that I can make a full 50 gallons so that we can start transferring water in the next couple of days upstairs. If you're wondering where the water is actually coming from, well, we have a fitting right here that's attached to a hose and the hose goes up to the ceiling and across and down into this container. This is our 125 gallons of RODI water. Bottom of that container is the Sichi Ultra Zero Utility Pump, which is amazing. We love it. That pump pumps through some hoses, giving us options for a mixed tank, which is what this one is. is. You can see the valve is open. We also have the ATO and an inline hose if we just want RODI water. That's how we do it. And there we go. We have our 50 gallons and I can begin putting the salt in. You may recall from the last update that I moved my Desjardini sail fin and my purple tang into this tank to make room for a new pair of fish. This is really special footage because it took me 15 minutes standing here to capture these guys on video. They're very skittish, but I know where they hang out now. And every once in a while, I see them for quite a few minutes before they suddenly notice me looming over them and they take off under the rocks. And what have we here? Well, we have hose in the tank. That end goes through there, down the back, and into the basement. So now we'll go down to the basement, and hopefully when I turn the pump on, it'll come up here, over the top, and into the tank. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, we're ready to transfer some water upstairs. 
we have an extra Jabo J-Cod DCS 7000 and the hose goes all the way upstairs. There it is right there. Got the controller and everything right here and it is plugged into this switch at the bottom. So as soon as I turn that on, hopefully water is going to get pumped out of here because everything's all shut off. We have marked the water level at rest right there, that black line. That's what we have to aim for when we start pumping water back in once this is empty. So that's the plan. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I got the okay from upstairs, so we're gonna turn it on. Okay, here it comes. Turn the pump on. Let's see what happens. Move some water. Controller comes on full. Now we'll have to see if it actually makes it upstairs. We have no guarantee. We really don't know whether this is gonna work. Let's just see if the water level's going down at all. Not much. Here's a time lapse. You can see how slowly the water level is retreating. We learned a couple things from this experience. One being that the best way to use a DC pump is to start with the lowest setting and allow it to ramp up and then gradually increase the settings in order to get the full power from it. So we went through this process a couple of times and eventually we got enough water in the tank upstairs that we could put a power head in and keep the water moving. Here's an example of one of the time lapses we took with the water slowly filling the tank upstairs. It really did take a while. That pump could be a little stronger, but you know, we did what we could with what we had available. And later that day, we finally did figure out what the problem was with the skimmer. It was not getting enough air. <laughs> and that's what I meant in the title when I said skimmer imploding. But we figured it out and eventually we did manage to get things running properly. And there you go, there's the reward. pH at 8.12 slash 13. Not bad. We'll see what it looks like in the morning. Finally got around to moving the doser had been down here. Now I have it up here and it's above where Alpha Reef goes into the tank. And why that matters is there's no air in the line now. I had been purging these lines pretty much every day. I can always tell because the hose would be white. There has been no air in the lines for the last couple days. Murky water. We're gonna fix that. I've scraped the bottom a little bit to loosen the sort of coating of crud that's on it. I'm guessing that came up from downstairs, but that's fine. And we are gonna get the canister filter out and see what happens. All right, the filter is already starting to stir things up. We've got it set up over here. It's a Fluval 406 that we used as one of the two canisters that we ran the 90 gallon holding tank. So there's the output, here's the intake. We've got them attached really securely with clamps because really there's no other way to do it. And hopefully it won't be on here long enough that those clamps start to rust. I have to keep an eye on that. But you can see there's already stuff starting to float around in here. It's hard to see the detail, but there are particulates in the water now. Before it was just kind of an ugly yellow color. And now we've actually got particulates that are going to be drawn through the filter. I have filter floss in there. I have two bags of carbon, just activated carbon pellets, and two bags of biomedia. It's actually matrix seeded that I pulled out of the 150. So here we go. Yeah. Looks good. We reoriented the power heads to push the water towards the other side. It's like a little snowstorm in there. So I'm looking forward to coming out here tomorrow and seeing if the water is getting clearer. 
next morning. Check it out. The particulates are pretty much gone. What we're seeing though is, I think, a bacterial haze on the water. Here's the filter over here. I've been burping it, which you need to do with canister filters. And it pumps air out if there is any. Yeah, there's a little bit. I might have got pretty much all the air out of there now, which is good until it builds up again, because it always does, because there's always just a little bit of air in the water. Pretty pleased that it cleared up this much overnight. So we're gonna do another scrubbing on the bottom, get things stirred up all around, because there is still a coating. And if we can get that off there and eventually get the glass clean, that would be awesome. Music to my ears, plumbing day has arrived. Day. We're getting ready for plumbing. Everything's here. Got the pumps out. He's working upstairs right now to install the piping in the overflow. And once that's done, we'll come down here and get all of this set up to hook up the pumps and get them run up through the floor. A few hours later, after solving a couple of unexpected problems, it was all done. Thanks so much, Nick. From Big Al's in Kitchener, you did an awesome job. Getting closer. The pumps are ready. And we're short one inch and a half union. So he's gone to the store to grab one of those. And we have a little platform built. My husband built this. It's gonna go beside here somewhere. That's where the bulkheads come out. It'll be joined into the pumps. And I've added a bit of water in here because the rocks have been out of the water for quite a while. Just enough to cover a power head and at the same time stay below the silicone, which is still curing. And over here we have, ta-da! Those lines come down. The two on either side of that two by four are the drains and the one that's in the middle you can see at the back is the emergency and here's how it's set up the emergency will go straight down there so if we hear noise from here that's what it'll be i'm going to create yeah this is how dirty this thing gets i'm going to create a slot in here below these pipes there will be pvc attached to that and Below the slot, I'm going to hang a basket made of egg crate and into the basket is going to go my filter floss. So I can just reach in, pull it out, replace it. These unions will allow those pipes to be removed so that if we ever have to clean these hoses out, we can do that. That goes upstairs to the tank. The black lid that goes on top of this thing uh, will have a slot cut in it that will fit around these pipes wherever they end up going down. That's how we'll keep the evaporation down to a minimum and the noise from all that falling water. So water will still fall from the bottom of the filter basket through the filter floss and hit the surface below. Ooh, look at all that grunge. I guess I should get that out of there too. And yeah, we'll see how that works. See if I uh, get tired of doing it <laughs> after a while. And here we are. Pumps are installed, not yet operational because we still don't want to push water upstairs quite yet, but we will in the next little while to fill the tank. The cords are here, but the controllers and the power supplies, we still have to figure out how we want to mount them on this wall. We have one plug there to plug one of them in, and over here we have a second plug to plug the second one in. We want them each to have their own circuit, just in case something goes wrong in one of the circuits trips. And we're not gonna plug them in the same circuit as the water heater, because it's on its own circuit as well. So yeah, it's uh, pretty darn nice. Here's what it looks like from inside. We're operating at a lower water level right now because that silicone has to cure for 24 hours. So there's enough water to run the sump 
and everything's stable. So we can leave it like this until tomorrow evening. Then we can fill it back up and get things back to normal. Yeah, stressful. My husband went to work and got these pipes lined up pretty close to where they're going to end up. So you can see how the thing will run once the drains are coming down from the tank. Bonus points if you know what those white brackets were originally meant for. We've repurposed them here. Okay, so the water has really cleared up in here since we put the canister filter on, but look. Yeah, <laughs> it needs a skimmer now. So I've aimed this power head upwards just to try and churn that a little bit and see if I can't get some of it absorbed back into the water and drawn into the canister filter. But the haze on this water was really heavy. In fact, the haze looked like that film and now the water's really clear. We've talked a lot about what to do if the power goes off when we're not home. How on earth would we know? So my very thoughtful husband gave me a couple of Christmas presents that will do just that. Tell us when the power is off when we're away from home. This thing is called my spool. It alerts you if the power is cut. So I'll get a text and an email which will tell me if there's any power interruption to this power bar. Why the power bar? Those two tanks are on the same circuit. When that circuit trips, everything shuts off. We don't know why it's wired that way, but it is. And it's caught us more than a few times. Now, if that power bar goes out or gets tripped or pops the breaker, I will know right away, no matter where I am, and we can make a decision about what to do about it. But you ask, how would we know if the power's out for the whole house? Well, I've added a second wise cam down here that's aimed at the ink bird, just so we can keep an eye on the heating system. If that camera goes down, then we know the power is out in the whole house because the black camera that surveys the entire room is plugged into that power bar. I won't be able to see the room with that. If I check the other wise cam and it is also out, then we know we have a whole house power outage. And then we can decide further how to address it. Everything is backed up by a battery backup, which will give us almost an hour to get home if we happen to be away. We really don't go too far these days, so we're hoping this will get us through until we manage to get a whole home generator installed. We're still on a waiting list for a consultation so that could take quite a while. And finally, one more layer of peace of mind. What do you do if there's a power outage in the middle of the night and you sleep through it? You need an alarm. And that's what this is. My husband bought me this. We've put it in our bedroom, so there's no way we would sleep through a power outage. Here's what it sounds like. Just loud enough and not startling. Perfect. So earlier I mentioned I thought this water needed a skimmer. So I looked in my stash and once again came up with something absolutely perfect. This is the Aquatop SSK surface skimmer. It's rated for anywhere from 60 to 100 gallons. There's about 175 gallons in here right now, but it doesn't matter. This thing has only been on here for two days. And check it out. The water is unbelievably clear. The surface no longer has that awful oily film. It's still a little bit discolored, kind of a yellow tinge. I may have to put more carbon in and see if I can pull that out. Or it could just be the lighting in here without the aquarium lights on, I'm not really sure but I am super impressed with the job this tiny little skimmer is doing in here. I think it costs less than $40, worth every penny. I added a 500 watt titanium heater in here, a Finex. To control it, I put this ink bird on and this is when I just turned it on. In the past few days, 
it has performed flawlessly. I finally made a start moving the rocks in here. Here's what they look like after a couple of days. It took that long for the water to clear up. It was a bit cloudy at first, but I expected that. So now I can move forward with the rest of the rocks. I feel confident the water's ready for that. Once they're in, I can top up the tank. And check it out, the skimmer still doing its job. So impressed. The water's calm right now because I have the power heads aimed at the bottom to push whatever detritus and dust came off of these rocks over towards the filter. There will be specific videos on various parts of this process in due course, but I did want to include all this stuff in this update because things are moving along. So if you've hung in this long, thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, why not give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing if you haven't already. Stay safe, everybody. Happy New Year, and I hope to see you soon when the live streams resume. I'll let you know.